right, so here we got the uh, Retron 5. And uh, what I want to do is uh, a breakdown of this, since Retron or Hyperkin actually got in some trouble for using the uh, RetroArch emulators on this, and uh, they didn't give them any credit. So it's pretty well known that this is actually just an Android-based device with uh, cartridge slots that kind of rips ROMs off of it, and then they got their own proprietary, um, got their own proprietary front end running on top of this, so that you know the front end's you know a lot cleaner than your standard Android would be. So essentially, it's just an APK running on top of Android. So anyway, uh, what I wanted to do here was do a teardown of this and uh, see what actual chipsets we got going on in here. Um, thing is about this is nobody, as far as I've seen, has actually done a teardown on one of these. I'm not sure why. Um, I am always kind of interested in seeing uh, how things work or what's inside of these, you know, see what they're actually uh, capable of. And like I said, as far as my Google searches, go, I couldn't find any information on it, so hopefully somebody finds this in information uh, worthwhile. So anyway, let's uh, tear it apart, and I will say I already took off the screws. They were uh, super easy to take off. Um, you have the two in the center, and then you have the four that were actually under the uh, rubber feet. I just took a flathead screwdriver to remove the rubber feet. You won't damage anything by doing this, so if you want to crack it open yourself, by all means, go ahead. So, let's take this off. And you'll see that on the top here, all we have is some circuitry to uh, show what cart connectors currently uh, installed. So, I'll set that off to the side. And if you want to remove that, it's easy enough. It's just an easy pin connector, but I'm just gonna kind of lay it off to the side for now. Okay. All right. Here we go. This is the actual meat of the console. So, as you can see here, it's a micro console. Um, here is your uh, processor. It's a uh, rock chip. RK3066, and I actually did a Google search on that particular chipset, and it's kind of underwhelming, I'm not going to lie. Um, it's actually a dual-core ARM Cortex processor, and it's only capable of uh, 1.6 gigahertz, and that runs also the uh, GPU, which is the uh, Mali 400, and I think that's running at 250 megahertz. So, at the very most, this is only running uh, a dual-core 1.6 gigahertz, which isn't that great. Um, the Ouya, for example, is a quad core, and it can be clocked all the way up to uh, 1.7 gigahertz. And now we go so far to say, since there's no heat sink on this, I would say this probably isn't running at 1.6 gigahertz. So I'm um, kind of curious to see what it's actually clocked at. Okay, so over here, I believe we have our RAM chips. And know that it actually shows. Let's see how large they are. Uh, I'll have to actually Google what size the RAM chips are here. But I'm going to assume this is uh, 512 megabytes. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, it, well, no, I take it back. This is probably a gig or a gig of RAM here. So have your um, two 512 uh, megabyte RAM chips to make up your uh, one gig of uh, system RAM. But uh, yeah, um, like I said, <laughs> it's a little bit underwhelming what's under the hood. Um, I mean, obviously it works for what, what it does, but I mean, as far as putting a custom firmware on here and then trying to run like an N64 emulator or something, it would probably run kind of slow to be honest with you. Uh, N64 emulators run fairly decent on the uh, Ouya, but uh, this it would probably have quite a bit of problem since it's only a dual core. But um, anyway, um, yeah, so I mean at least now everybody kind of has an idea what's in here. Um, I'm probably not the first person to do this, but like I said, I couldn't find any information on it, so 
anyway, yeah, uh, hopefully you guys found this interesting, and uh, I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching.